Well, let's start with the story that's been dominating headlines for weeks now. Look, set to heat up even more this week, which is the industrial action by the Maritime Union. Now, the Maritime Union is, of course, part of the Bolshe CFMEU, and they're going against the ports operator DP World. There's concern now that the action could spread beyond just DP World to two other key stevedores, Hutchinson Ports and Patrick Terminals, which would further cripple our supply chains, because, of course, the federal government uh, last year brought in these rules that you could have multi-bargaining arrangements. Well, the Industrial Relations Minister, Tony Burke, who, of course, brought that in last week, seemingly wiped his hands of this issue, saying that the union and DP World just need to sort it out themselves. I've made clear to, uh, to both groups today that I have no intention of intervening. The concept that where every other business in Australia is expected to negotiate with their workforce, but this business wants to rely on ministerial intervention, is not a view that impresses me. Now, Paul, this is costing the country $80 million a week now. Mm. And if you look at what the, the wharfies are asking, and who would have thought the wharfies, you know, unionised... <laughs> very reasonable, against the very employees. reasonable claim. We've never seen it before. No. They're asking for 27.5% over two years. I mean, who's getting that kind of pay rise? And they're already paid between 130 and 140 k a year before overtime and bonuses. And they want to hold up the, the country's uh, resources and everything coming in because they want 27.5%. Well, don't forget, we've had a couple of things on the water, uh, the waterfronts since the major conflict of the 1990s, but certainly in the past 12 months. DP World, remember, was a victim of a cyber attack at one point in time, which meant there was already disruption to Australian ports through this company. The government's response to basically say the company's spending too much time on its PR as opposed to dealing with its workers. I'm not going to pretend to know the finances of the company, but you know, 24 to 27% pay rise does seem a little stiff when you're already way over uh, $100,000. But something that this is a little reminder of is a lot of people seem to think that something has magically changed in the global supply chain for Australia since the intervention of the internet. Amazon doesn't ship it via the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you order from a crappy warehouse in China or a, you know, Fun Boys T-shirt in Thailand, just talking about what Joe would do. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, that's my night's order. Of course, it ends up coming via, uh, via the two ways you can only get here, and that's to fly or to sail mm -hmm. it, which means these sorts of disputations are deeply important. But as a sign of how far away, generally speaking, our media has got from understanding how serious this is, is that this might be the first time a lot of people are even hearing about this yeah, particular situation yeah. as opposed to previous times where mm. we've been frontline news because people think, double-click, oh, it just appeared. It doesn't go through the internet. <laughs> if only it could, though. Yeah. But see, and and we're all, we'll all pay for it, Danica. I mean, mm. Mm. Uh, if, it's, if it's DP World, that's one thing. If you sure. get all the other ports involved, and, and this is what they're saying now, is because of these multi-bargaining arrangements where you can essentially have multiple employers brought into the one room to negotiate one deal, if you can hold up all the ports in the country Mm. what the hell are we going to do? Well, that's a really good question. What the hell are we going to do? And I think this week was a complete missed opportunity by Tony Burke to have actually done something to try and mitigate this from becoming even worse. I've got to ask, is Tony Burke becoming... Is he the Workplace Relations Minister or is he the Minister for the Union Movement? Because Indeed. right now... The MUA is walking all over him and we've got a situation where this dispute is costing $84 million a week. Growers are particularly concerned. The Australian Retailers Association has already come out and said, well, businesses are now at risk of their shelves going empty. And this week, all he had to say was, oh, well, it was misguided for them to think that the government is going to intervene in this. Well, what are you going to do about it? Our economy is relying on it. Yeah, well, you, you can't just sort of go around... So, well, I mean, they can, obviously. They will, because uh, the Labor Party has a relationship with uh, the unions, Evelyn. But uh, when it gets to a point where we start to pay the price for it, we know how bad the cost of living already is, mm. something has to give. And if the government is not willing to go in and say, well, DP World and the union, knock your heads together and sort this out, it's bad for all of us. 
It is, and I think that's unfortunately what happens as a result of strikes like this. It's usually the people who have nothing to do with it, the innocent bystanders who aren't contributing to whatever problems they're going on strike for that suffer for it. Uh, my heart sort of feel, goes out for the people with perishable goods in this situation, the farmers, uh, agriculture, things like that. I'm a farmer myself. Um, I'm... I'm gratefully not affected by this, but there are a lot of people uh, who are. We've had it really tough for a while now during COVID uh, and then during the recent drought. Praise God, we kicked El Nino's butt and it's been raining, but it has been really tough. So, you know, I think that there definitely needs to be something done for those particular uh, industries um, because, like, we're, we're going to see, like, Things do perish, and if we are having all of these delays and things are happening, it's wasted food. We're apparently, you know, in a, a hunger crisis around the world, but we're going to have farmers in Australia who have fruit rotting on their trees because they can't afford to get it picked, they can't and get it well, sold. I know. I mean, that's, that's already right. bad enough. We can't get workers in, we can't do anything about that, and then we can't send it. Well, I think, 